Okay, yeah. start it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so, uh, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, so, this, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to give a talk here. So, uh, my title, the title is Presumification in the Wild. Uh, in this talk, I will introduce my uh, very recent works on this task and uh, uh, introduce to you three data sets that uh, is not that is not available before. So this data sets is named Market, Mars, and W. So, <coughs> so my talk is has six parts. And first, I will give you a brief introduction to person identification. And uh, second, I will give you an overview of current arts. And uh, and next three parts, I will show you. Uh, the three data sets I we have constructed and associating baselines and also we have some uh, very uh, new insights in these tasks and also we will share with you some new research possibilities that is being available by, uh, by our work uh, that is not uh, available before. So <coughs> first, introduction to person identification. Maybe this uh, uh, new task to you. <coughs> Actually, um, there's only a couple of years that we have this task has researched uh, some papers. Um, so uh, basically, um, the input of this task is a query image. This is a query, a person of interest. We want to we want to search for this person. And another input is the raw video frames. So we have some video frames recorded by some cameras. And we are interested in this person, so we want to set, we want to determine if this person appears in this in these cameras or not. This we want to do. We want to determine if this person appears in this camera. So uh, this is the two inputs, and the output of this task is a rank list, a rank list of the bounding boxes of the uh, pedestrian bounding boxes. This this rank list is ranked according to their similarity with the query. So, so basically, this task uh, has two components. The first is pedestrian detection, and the second is person identification. Uh, for pedestrian detection, we have these video frames, and we do detectors and on these frames, and uh, we have these bounding boxes of these pedestrians. With these bounding boxes, we can form we can form a gallery. This gallery contains all the bounding boxes. Uh, these bounding boxes may contain persons or some background. So, so this is the gallery. So we're given a query person, this person we are interested in. So we calculate <coughs> the similarity between this person and all the bounding boxes in the gallery. We calculate the similarity. And then we rank these images according to their similarity from high to low and get a rank list. So hopefully, if this person <coughs> appears in this gallery and these two images should receive a high score and should be ranked at a very high position in the rank list. So this is basically what the person re-identification do. Here is an overview of current arts of this task. <coughs> um, we just we just described this pipeline before. So for the current studies, uh, people always focus on the re-identification part. They do not they, they just take the detection result as input and do the recognition part. They do not consider detection. So this is what the people focus on now. So uh, essentially, this is a ranking process. They calculate the similarity and rank all the database bounding boxes. So as I mentioned, the, this task has only begun for a couple of years. So current data sets are quite small. These data sets, for example, the Viper data set, it is the most popular one used in current papers. Uh, this data set only has 600 
different pe persons and uh, over 1,000 bounding boxes. And the second data set is uh, also a very popular data set. It only has 100 persons and 600 bounding boxes. So these data sets are very small. So some they, you can use very complicated method on these data sets and get very high performance. But this method may, may, may not work on the large scale data set. So this is the first uh, limitation of the current data sets. And the second uh, limitation is that the current data sets only focus on the recognition part. They do not focus on the detection part. So uh, these data sets only provide some predefined bounding boxes. And moreover, these bounding boxes are hand drawn. They are drawn by hand. They are not by detections. <coughs> For example, these are some examples in the current data sets. They, they are drawn by hand, not by detections, detect detectors. So these are some detected bounding boxes. So we can see uh, there are some misalignment in these persons. But for hand-drawn bounding boxes, the uh, persons are aligned very well. So, <coughs> so current data sets are quite ideal towards the ideal settings. So the third problem is that uh, since the current data sets, they use hand-drawn bounding boxes. So they do not include some false detection results. For detectors, we always have some false detection results. And these uh, results on the background will have an impact on the recognition accuracy. So they do not have these detection results. <coughs> this is the third limitation. Then uh, current data sets only have one query image for a person and only one ground truth for a person. For example, this is a same person. They have two images. One is the query, and the other one is the ground truth we want to search for. So with this data, we cannot make full, full, use, uh, full use of the multiple queries or some video data. And also, we cannot have some re-ranking method that take, adva take advantages of the multiple queries, multiple ground truths. If we have multiple ground truths, we can s design some re-ranking method. So this is a, a fourth limitation. I'm uh, sorry, I, I just want to understand. So only one query image per person? Uh, that is to say, one person only have two images, and one is the query, and the other is put in the database. You want to search for this image. You only have one query, query bounding box, and you want to search this specific bounding box. So that's your training set, right? Uh, both training and testing. For training, you have two images of one person. For example, in classification, in this class, you only, only have two images. So you only have two training data? Yeah, for this per class. Per person? Yeah, two training data. And uh, during testing, you, only, you also have two uh, images for this person, and one is the query, and one is the database. Uh, you want to search this one in the database. So both training and testing, you only have two images of one person. Uh, yeah, but I'm just trying to understand the problem. But you said you wanted to retrieve a ranked list of detections, right? Yes. But why, why does it make sense to retrieve the whole list if you're only looking for one example? Uh, for, uh, that is a good question. Uh, maybe I didn't make it clear. Uh, this is a database, a gallery. It has uh, maybe uh, thousands of bounding boxes. So one of this image should be the ground truth to the query. Right, only one. They are, they are yeah. only one. Yeah. So you have to calculate the similarity between all these bounding boxes and the query. And you have to rank all these bounding boxes according to their similarity. And hopefully, you will rank this image in the first, in the first rank. Yeah, I'm just, um, it's unclear to me why would you, why you would want a rank. Because you just want, you want, want to retrieve the nearest neighbor. Uh, yeah, uh, that is the nearest neighbor. Yeah, you can say nearest neighbor. So you on your list of uh, sort of detections, your detection number two until the end, it's not use not useful, right? Yeah, uh, detection the detection results should be uh, should all be useful. Yeah, they should be used for for the for this nearest neighbor search. No, I mean, 
you, you output a sorted list of detections, right? Mm -hmm. But you only care about the first one, um, most popular one. Actually, the evaluation metric should be uh, a, a CMC curve. And that means uh, you can, the for example, CMC curve at one is the possibility you find the correct one in the, the rank one. And at rank five is the possibility that you can find this person. I see. So your evaluation five. metric uh, accounts for where in the sorted list your correct one appears. Yes, okay, exactly. Okay. But that is that metric is not very good because it assumes that only one ground truth exists. Yeah. So if we have multiple ground truths, for example, we have uh, ten ground truths for this query person, the the, the the traditional evaluation metric is not very good. We have to use some, uh, for example, mean average precision for that. Okay. So current data sets are very, you know, quite toy data, and they are not very practical. And fi uh, finally, these data sets are image-based. They, they only use these bounding boxes. So the, the video, uh, the information in videos are not under, are, are very, you know, they do not use this information. So this is a mainstream framework. For example, we have two images belonging to the same person. So uh, the main, the, this framework has two steps. The first step is feature design. You have to extract some features from these bounding boxes. And then the second is metric learning, metric design. This is a typical case of the, uh, the uh, similarity measurement. Uh, so they typically want to learn a metric n that minimize the distance between images of the same person and also maximize the distance between images of uh, different persons. So they want to uh, learn a metric. So these two steps are the basic component in this framework. And also previous papers, they uh, usually focus on these two steps. So in this talk, I will show you uh, that with our new data sets, we can have more research possibilities besides these two steps. So I will introduce you uh, to you three uh, re-identification data sets. So all these data sets are annotated from the same video uh, collected from Tsinghua University uh, in um, uh, August 2014. So we have six cameras and five are HD cameras and one SD camera. So uh, among these cameras, they have some moderate overlap in the viewpoint, but they always uh, uh, oriented at the same scene, but have some moderate overlap. And the length of video is 12 hours. These are uh, six images of the six cameras. They just shoot at the same scene, and uh, uh, they have some overlap in viewpoint. So this is a st static camera? Yeah, static camera. Okay. So these five cameras are HD cameras, and this is an SD camera. OK, so <clears throat> first I want to introduce you the market 1501 data set. This is a large scale image-based reality data set. Uh, this data set uh, basically has 1501 identities, and it has over 32 bounding boxes, and uh, by the deformable part model, um, and it's not clear, but um, it is not critical. But uh, so these are some sample images. For each row, this should be a same person, a same person, same person. So we showed for same person in this row, and uh, we can see there are very extensive post changes. Um, misalignment and the uh, viewpoint changes. So compared with pre previous uh, image-based reality data sets, the market 1501 data set is the largest one. And um, mm, now it is, uh, uh, it has over, uh, 500k distractors. Uh, its its volume is about 500k. So <coughs> it is 
collected by DPM detector, and we use the mean average precision to evaluate the uh, re-identification accuracy. What is destructors? Um, it means, uh, let me explain the next slide. Okay. Here, here are some examples of the destructors. The destructors include some incorrect, some false positive detection results on the background, such as these images. And also, it includes some non-overlapping pedestrians with the original market 1501 data set. It's some other, other pedestrians. They are not overlapped with the main data set. So, so finally, we have the market 1501 data set plus 500K data set. I see the correct people. Why is it incorrect? Uh, yeah, I mean, these are some pedestrians that uh, they do not overlap with the this data set, 1501 data set. This person, this person, does not appear in this data set. Just some distractor persons. So, they do not appear in this data set. They are not the queries. They are not what we want to search for. Okay. Yeah. So you have manually identified like 1,501 1, pedestrians. You want to yeah. identify? Yeah. Mm, and you said you use DPM for detection? Yeah. What's if DPM uh, output the wrong detection? Do you clean this detection? No, I don't de clean them. I just put them in the destructor set. There are some false detections. These are some false detections. But I, what I didn't consider is the misdetection. If the DPM fails to detect a person, I didn't take them into account. Miss, miss the means you already have a... I have a person in the image, but I didn't, I, I didn't manage to detect it, detect it. Then that means you have manually specify how many person you care on this data set. Then you apply DPM. And then, then you see, can DPM detect this person? No. Actually, the, uh, the order is this. I first use DPM to detect these pedestrians. Okay. I have a list, uh, I have many detection results, mm -hmm. and from these detection results, we manually label uh, one, uh, 1,500 persons. Manually means you select, this is the correct detection, this is the... This is the correct detection, mm -hmm. and this is, per, uh, this is ID 1. Okay. And this ID 2. And if a person comes out and then comes in, you know, uh, two hours later, we have to manually determine whether this person has appeared before. So we have to give it an ID anyway. Okay. So if a person comes in, comes out, comes in, comes out, it has the same ID. I see. Okay. That is the most difficult part. So uh, besides this data set, we propose an unsupervised Bagel Boris representation. Uh, this Representation basically is uh, 5,600 dimensional, and uh, it's basically a color feature, color histogram. And this feature has achieved the state of the art results on, set on, on compared with some popular descriptors. So this descriptor uh, is unsupervised. The advantage is that for person identification, it is quite expensive to collect some uh, fully annotated training data because you have to manually assign an ID to a pedestrian, so it's quite expensive. So for now, our collaboration with Microsoft Research, we use, use this unsupervised uh, descriptor because they don't have to train, they don't have to label, manually label a lot of training data, and they can use this feature and get quite decent results. So, this is an experiment on the market 1501 plus 500K data set. Uh, the horizontal axis is database size and the vertical uh, axis is MAP. So, uh, so we can see it is quite normal that as the database gets larger, the performance uh, drops uh, considerably. Um, this is a quite normal observation, but it is not observed in person identification because no one has such large data set so they cannot test it. 